Hello, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to process the Microsense Red Edge AM multi spectral datasets in Pix4D Mapper for agriculture applications. So, first we need to start the Pix4D Mapper application, and this is the main interface you will see when you open the software. So the first step, we're going to create a project uh, for this data processing. So here, we click New Project. So in this dialog, we're going to name this project. So I'm going to use the April 13, 2021 data as an example so so I simply named that uh, by the date and also red edge so you would like to specify your uh, folder uh, to save this project and you can put it anywhere you like uh, for me I put it under my C drive uh, pix4d folder um, because uh, this has an SSD, so the C drive will be, be faster than the D drive or any other drive, uh, if that's applicable to you. Then click Next. So in this step, we're going to add images. So go to the data folder so I'm going to use April 13 so I will select this April 13 folder and go to Red Edge so now these subfolders are uh, created uh, from the microsense during the flight uh, because you know if you access the folder you can tell that each folder can only hold roughly 1000 image so like this 199 uh, and 5 band uh, that's about in totally um, uh, that's about in total 1000 images because it starts from zero so <clears throat> we just need to do some pre-selection uh, you can tell that this the first uh, like uh, 30 ish photos are captured from the ground. Uh, you can tell there is a grass on the ground. So, starting from number 7, band 1, that's uh, the normal flight data. So, for the first folder, we're going to select from that picture to the very end of this folder. Click open. And then go to the next folder. Um, so this uh, for this folder uh, there are all uh, like normal flight imagery so we just select all of them um, so you can click on the first image and press shift button on the keyboard and then click the last image or simply you can press control and A uh, to select all the images in this folder and then go to the next one so for this folder uh, because we also have the calibration panel we would like to skip this panel picture uh, we'll use them later but not for now so we just select from the first picture to the picture before the calibration panel so you can see we have uh, in total 2655 images uh, this number will, will vary uh, according to your pro, uh, project folder sometimes it's uh, more than this number sometimes you, ha you, you may have less images than this number um, if you see a green check mark here uh, which means we're good to go 
um, which means you know uh, you have added enough images to process the data. So just click uh, next. This will take a while. Uh, Pix4D is reading the EXIF data from your your uh, images, and the EXIF data is kind of like the metadata that describes uh, um, the in basic information for your uh, images. So what time is taken, uh, or uh, what attitude uh, is the data captured from, and uh, some basic information like that, uh, which are critical to the PIX4D mapper uh, software. Just give it a second uh, to wait uh, to wait for um, uh, this procedure to finish. Okay, it will not give you a warning or something, um, but you can see that it's creating creating the camera weak information. So once it's done. Uh, It'll pop up a dialog like this. Okay, so several things to uh, keep in mind. Here, the coordinate system, uh, the software usually recognizes uh, this information from the images automatically. So the data, we're using WGS 1984. Coordinate system is also WGS 84. So you want to keep this um, information. Uh, uh, in some cases, if it's not recognized uh, correctly, you can click the edit here. You can cho choose uh, uh, the correct uh, data and according to system. So in our case, uh, we keep this uh, as default. Uh, geolocation images, uh, all of them, are uh, geolocated, which is good, which means all the 2655 images have coordinates in the data, which is good. Um, so for the camera model, it also read the information from the, uh, you know, the EXIF data. So red edge M, that's the correct model. Um, so now we would like to check the table here. Uh, this table actually gives a description of all the images. Okay, so what band is that data, and what latitude, longitude, uh, and altitude, uh, you know, uh, the data was taken from. Accuracy, uh, it's just an estimation. Okay, so we would like to take a look at this number here. Uh, if the altitude uh, is around 275 that usually is good uh, our ground or uh, the ground elevation is about 255 meter uh, so 277 that's about 20 meter uh, that's about right if you happen to see some number that's 255 so in that case you would like to deselect the data let's assume that this one uh, is 255 you would like to uncheck the box uh, to deselect this image uh, because uh, including that that image will cause some error. Okay, now we click click the next. Uh, here uh, we have two options. Actually, uh, there's an advanced coordinate option. You can check that or not. Um, sometimes we check that this option, uh, you will see some error. Uh, so uh, if you see some error, you go back to here and and check that ad advan uh, advanced coordinate option. So the other information are usually recognized uh, in the right way. So just keep them, uh, keep this information untouched, and click next. The software will 
you know, uh, read the input that you just gave, and then come to this processing option template. Um, so the processing option templates are actually uh, uh, like uh, 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 integration of different uh, processing um, methods. So for our uh, project, uh, so typically we were we are interested in uh, interested in getting the uh, remote sensing index. Uh, so we prefer this agriculture multispectral uh, template. Um, this takes longer time, as you can see from here. However, it gives a, a better quality um, for the data outputs, and also. It also calculates the NDVI and the RE, uh, you know, this, uh, this types of uh, uh, remote sensing index, which is uh, uh, great for our application. And now just click finish. Now we finished the, uh, you know, uh, preset ups. Uh, for loading the project. So now comes to the uh, uh, interface of the uh, the software. Uh, here at the bot lower uh, left side, we can see the three uh, processing steps. Uh, so so uh, step one is initial processing, and uh, step two is point cloud and mesh, and step three is DSM, or the mosaic and the index. Um, so I, I would uncheck number two and three uh, because sometimes uh, some error may pops up uh, at step one. So you do not want to uh, uh, to find the error until you finish step three. So running them individually will help find out uh, you know those errors. So for step one. We'll go to the processing option, and we'll check those the details uh, for the step step one setup. So usually we keep this the key point image scale as full, uh, unless you have some error, you may go to custom custom. You can choose you know different image scale and matching. I usually keep this default. In calibration and here uh, for the agriculture mod spectral template uh, it's alternative uh, if it's other template like 3d maps uh, it may use as uh, the standard calibration okay so just click OK And here, just click start, and the software will start uh, the initial processing uh, step. This will take a while. Uh, so usually this takes uh, uh, from uh, several minutes to uh, an hour.